Do you believe in law of attraction and positive thinking? Have you wondered why you're not where you want to be? Why you're not as successful as you want to be? By the end of this video, I will highlight a major breakthrough of positive thinking and what it does to you and your goals and how positive thinking can actually hinder you from achieving your goals. And after learning about the why not, why doesn't positive thinking work? I will also show you the how. How can you actually achieve your goals? And I will be sharing with you a scientific way of achieving your goals called WHOOP. More about that by the end of this video. Welcome back to the dividend challenge, which I deposit $200 into my dividend investing portfolio every single Monday. And let's get right into it. So first of all, let's take a look at my Weibo portfolio, which is my smallest portfolio. Currently, my net account value is $1,196.66, and I am actually down by 10.69%. I'm not too worried about this because this is just like my play money anyway. I don't plan on really like touching this money. It is all mostly free stocks and just the portfolio. I haven't really touched it since a long time. And when we look at my current holdings, I have FFIN, I have APLS, I have DEI, I have ABT. And all of these four stocks are actually all free stocks. And you might be wondering by now, hey, Cherry, I want to get free stocks too. How can I get free stocks? To get free stocks, you can basically just go to my info box, click that Weeble link, and by depositing just $100, you'll be able to get two free stocks, the second free stock valued up to $1,400. So this is how you can get the free stocks, and you can thank me later. And uh, back at the portfolio, I have McDonald's, I have Ultrix, I have Nokia, Bank of America, AT&T, and tapestry. So these are all the stocks within my portfolio. And you probably know that Weibo also has a really good function called paper trading. And so let's take a look at our paper trading portfolio to see what is going on with that. So moment of truth. Ooh, this is my paper trading portfolio. Currently, I'm actually up by 31.89%, up by $318,875.25. And you can see by far the one that's carrying the whole team is Tesla, up by almost 200%, 191%, whoo, up by 300K, just Tesla. I really wish that this is like my real Tesla holding or else, you know, I'd be, I'd be pretty awesome. I'd be probably buying myself, you know, just another property, no biggie, 300 100K just, just right for a down payment in, in LA. But yeah, um, yeah, would be nice if I get another rental property. That would be pretty nice. That's probably a 2021 goal. And then I also have work, I have Ultrix, and I have McDonald's in this portfolio. And Ultrix is the one that is a down, which is really funny because I remember a couple weeks ago, I was saying how Ultrix is doing so much better, but over here it's down, which goes to say, like the market is really volatile, so you never want to really, you know, put all your eggs into one basket, you always want to diversify your investments. And with Alteryx, airplane, <laughs> And with Alteryx, the reason why it's down right now is because it did not have uh, that good of an earnings, the last earnings call. So that's why it is down, which goes to say, you know, it's very unpredictable. You never want to put all your eggs into one basket, especially when it comes to like newer companies. It's definitely important to make sure that you don't want to just like bet all your money onto one single company and one single stock. And now that we've taken a look at the Weibo portfolio, let's take a look at the dividend investment, a dividend investing portfolio with M1 Finance. So this is my M1 Finance portfolio. We finally broke 30K onto this portfolio, yay! celebration time. And over here, you can see that I'm up by 21.04%, which is just day and night compared to just a couple weeks ago when I was actually down on this portfolio. And this goes to say, like when you are patient in the market, it is like time in the market, not timing the market. That is really, really important for you to keep in mind. Investing should be a long-term thing. It should be a long-term game. And all the top investors that I know, like Warren Buffett, we're all long-term investors. We don't try for like quick wins. We don't gamble with our money. And we just invest in quality companies that, well, in my case, since I'm a dividend investor, I also focus on quality companies that produce dividend income over time. And let's take a look at what is inside of Cherry's passive income. 
And so within shares of passive income, there is tech, real estate, bonds, finance, healthcare, consumer, telecom, and utilities. And let's switch things up a little because I know I always like show the tech first. Let's look at the healthcare. So healthcare, I'm up by 12.61%. I've Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, MDT, MRK, ABBV, Emgen, and United Health Group. And honestly, all of them are performing really well compared to the start of the pandemic when like this whole sector was red, which goes to say, again, time in the market is more important than timing the market. And uh, now that we've looked at bonds, also take a look at real estate since um, I'm not shy to hide my losses. So realty income is down, NRZ is down, store capital is down, or store capital is not down, it's up by almost 20%, 19.83%. Wall Towers up, LTC properties is down, SPG is also down. By far the one that's down by the most is SPG, which is not surprising because SPG, as you know, is all about malls, Simon Property Group, and you know, with the current quarantine situation, people are not really going anywhere so it's really normal that this one is not doing as well. Now that we've taken a look at the real steak slice, real steak, I'm getting hungry, steak slice. Now let's take a look at the tech. So tech is over 100% gains and you might be wondering, Yes, it is Tesla again. <laughs> you might be wondering what is what is causing all the gains is Tesla again. Sorry, no suspense over there. And um, there is my Tesla that's up by 255%. And the good thing about M1 Finance is that it allows you to do dividend reinvesting and it also allows you to buy fractional shares. Before Robinhood ever came out with fractional shares, M1 Finance already had it. And so the reason why Tesla is in this portfolio, even though like this is mainly dividend focused, is because Tesla has always been like pretty expensive on the expensive side. So I wanted to buy more Tesla without having enough money to buy the whole entire share. And so I started doing just partial share investing with Tesla within M1 Finance and because I entered early, my average cost is also a lot lower and my average share price is also a lot lower. So this is my cost and my average share price is actually $561.98. And currently you can see Tesla's current price is $2,153.17. And you probably know that Apple and Tesla are also doing a stock split, which you can check out more information in this video, which I explained exactly what is going on with the stock split. What should you do as an investor? So check out this dividend challenge video, which I talk more about what does that mean for us investors and what to do in that situation. But um, overall, just taking a look at the tech slice I'm always very bullish about. I'm really happy with the results. There's also Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Alphabet, Visa, and Ultrix. And by far, it's almost like they're being ordered by like how, how high they go, except for Amazon, because Amazon, even though the base is 20%, I did not rebalance this pie. So even though the base for Amazon is 20%, I only have 7.6 over 20%. If I did rearrange this though, this pie or this slice of my pie would have done even better. And so that is what is in my tech pie. And um, overall, I just want to say like M1 Finance is by far my favorite method to do dividend investing, not just because I do have a link in the info box if you want to use it. And if you do, I will get a little something something when your portfolio reaches 1,000, so of course I want you to succeed because when your portfolio hits 1,000, I do get a little something, but if it doesn't, I don't get no nothing. But um, not just that, just the fact that when you look at this pie, again, it's very like, it gives me a lot of satisfaction as a fellow Virgo. I love just, you know, things that are neat and um, things that, you know, fit well within each other. Not just that, not just like visually pleasing, but the fact that you can't really see the stock price within just like the first glance, you actually have to scroll to see the price. It, it just it takes the focus off of the price and more focus onto the actual value of the company, which is what's really important. And also the fact that this is really, really passive. So even though I do deposit $200 into this portfolio every single Monday, I do not have to manually choose which stocks to buy. And I don't have to manually, you know, watch the news and decide which of the um, 200, like should I, should should I, which of the stocks should I put my 200 into? I can do it automatically with M1 Finance and um, it does automatic allocation. So as you can see, I've allocated some um, preset percentages of each stock. So for example, for Tesla, I want 40% of my money going to Tesla, 
Right now, it's 59.9 over 40% because Tesla's share price did go up by a lot. So that's why it's kind of out of whack. But for the most part, it is going to allocate it according to my preset allocations, my preset percentages. So everything's really automatic. And of course, there's also that rebalance button, which helps you buy and sell so that you can closely match your preset percentages. And not just that, it also does automatic dividend reinvesting. So when you get dividend income and we are still young and you don't need to lift off of your dividend income, you're actually able to reinvest that money back into your stocks so that you can buy more shares of the same stocks and snowball your portfolio into a bigger and bigger snowball and therefore also get paid exponentially more in dividend income because you have more shares that pay you those dividend income. And so you probably have seen how my portfolio literally start from like zero to right now 30k and I will do a very elaborate video about my 30k portfolio. That one is coming soon but I just want to say like M1 Finance is really really great, really passive, really easy to use, very intuitive and also very aesthetically pleasing so definitely my top choice for just doing like easy dividend investing for both beginners and also more seasoned investors. And now that we have taken a look at our M1 Finance portfolio, let's take a look at the Fidelity portfolio which is my growth portfolio. So this is my growth portfolio from Fidelity. Currently I'm up by $4,848.02 and I'm up by 4.36% just today. My one year rate of return as of July 31st, 2020 is 40.05%. And when we look at the positions, you can see currently at Facebook, Tesla, Baba, MasterCard, Disney, Visa, Revolve, Elf, Tapestry, Starbucks, 3M, Intel, and PSEC. One of them is the margin account because it's a free stock from my Robinhood, which transferred over. And uh, there's also Boeing, CCL, and this is just my cash. And the good thing about you know transferring from Robinhood to Fidelity is that even though your Robinhood account is like closed and you can't really do anything with it, if you share your Robinhood link, you can still get the free stocks and they'll just automatically get transferred to your Fidelity account. And that is if you decide to transfer your Robinhood account account to your Fidelity account, which is what I've done. And if you want to know why and how, check out these two videos because I will then show you why I decided to make that decision and how I did it and what are the things that you have to know before you make this decision because there are some nuances that you have to be wary of. And I'm taking a look at today's gain and loss. Let's take a look. So today's gain and loss, there are some reds over here, but in the grand scheme of things, you can see that my total gain and loss, I only have four stocks that are currently down. And um, actually it's like three stocks because PSEC is like the same stock. And so CCL down normal because of this current you know, quarantine situation with what's happening to the world. That's totally normal. No one's really going to cruise ships. I'm not even going to malls. I'm not even going to like parks. So of course, cruise ship is a no-go. And then uh, there is Boeing, which also normal with the whole Boeing situation scandal and with the whole travel industry being really affected by what is going on right now. That is also a no-go. And then there's also PSEC. PSEC is also down. So that is also, um, I'm not too worried about this because this is a dividend paying stock and I just care more about the dividend income rather than the stock price itself. And I'm also a long-term investor. So I don't really mind too much that PSEC is temporarily down. And um, let's take a look at in total. So in total, I'm up by $41,960.20. And as of the end of July, I'm up by 40%. And um, you might be wondering, hey, Cherry, you're a dividend investor. Why the frick is your growth portfolio so much larger? And a large part of that is because I decided to go really ham during March when there's a market downturn. And I was like, I really want to take this opportunity because I see all these red, which means like for sale signs. And I was like, I really want to buy quality companies on discount. And so that is why I went really ham in March to buy a lot of tech stocks like Facebook and a lot of just like high growth stocks for my growth portfolio. And I used a combination of Fidelity and Robinhood, which then I merged into Fidelity because I said goodbye to Robinhood. And so that is why my growth portfolio is so large that I actually haven't been buying any more stocks in like the recent couple weeks. If you check back at my dividend investing challenge, I show you exactly what I do every single week with my portfolio. And I really haven't been buying more dividend stocks. It just kept growing and growing and I just did not really see any good buying opportunities. And as promised in this video, I will also share with you one major breakthrough about positive thinking and law of attraction and why it does not work. And um, just a little disclaimer, I've always been really, really 
interested in positive thinking and law of attraction, and I'm also very huge on mindset. So by me, you know, listening to this podcast, and this podcast is called Hidden Brain. Um, it's a really good podcast. Highly recommend. By listening to this podcast in the very beginning, I was actually really, really skeptical because I felt a little personally attacked, and I, I was just really skeptical the whole time because they said positive thinking does not work. Um, all of this like mindset stuff, like just imagine you are already successful. This stuff doesn't work. And at that time, I was just like, what? But it worked for me. But then, yeah, I am going to share with you, just like summarize the whole hour long podcast into the following. So first of all, the reason why a positive thinking does not work is that it gives you the false illusion that you've already achieved your goals. And it actually takes away from your energy and also your motivation to achieve those same goals. And the reason being when you feel like, let's say you want to um, ace your math exam. <laughs> this, I, why do I always use this example? Typical Asian <laughs> nerd. But yeah, um, let's say your goal is to ace your math exam. If you really feel that you're already acing your math exam, like you've already aced your math exam, if that is your form of positive thinking, then guess what? You're not gonna put in the time to study because in your mind, you're already like, hey, I'm already like, an A math student, I already aced my math exam, what is the point of studying, what's the point of putting in more hours to do problems and exercises because I've already achieved success. That is the theory. The theory is that, hey, when you already feel like you've achieved some sort of goal, you're not going to want to put in the equal amount of time and energy. And they even like ran a couple experiments just on um, people who have a certain set goal. And um, if they do a lot of positive thinking and thinking that they've already achieved that goal, the result is that they don't try as hard and they don't get as good of a result. And um, more about that, if you want to learn more about the actual study, of course you can look it up, but that is just a very summarized version. And so here comes a question. So if you're saying that positive thinking doesn't actually work, then what works? So what works is actually called WHOOP. So WHOOP stands for wish, outcome, obstacle, and plan. And so what, what does this mean? Let's dissect this one by one. So first, what is your wish? So wish is what do you wish to get? What is your most like ideal life? What is your most ideal situation? So that is your wish. And then the outcome is what kind of outcome? What kind of outcome comes with that wish? So for example, if you say, hey, my wish is to be financially free, and then the outcome might be, I will be financially free when I generate, let's say $100,000 from my business every single year. So that is the outcome. So 100,000 in profit, let's say. And then the obstacle is really thinking about, then what is stopping you from getting to that $100,000 profit mark? What is really stopping you? And then it really helps you to really understand, like what, what are the main roadblocks? What are the actual things Things are stopping you from getting that 100k in profit? Is it because the fact that you have too many distractions? Is it because there's that shiny object syndrome and you're just trying all these different things that don't align with your ultimate goal, that don't align with your business goals? Or is it the fact that you're not really spending any money on upgrading your knowledge and upgrading your skills? You're not really learning from mentors who are ahead of you? Is that why? And so it really helps you understand what are the roadblocks? And then this helps you get to the last point, which is plan. So the whoop, the P is the plan. How do you plan on getting rid of this obstacle? So instead of just, you know, doing positive thinking and thinking, oh my gosh, it must be nice when I am finally financially free and I'm able to just travel whenever I want to and be location independent and be able to also give back to my family and maybe even retire my parents. Like instead of just thinking that, thinking about like the most ideal situation, actual, like actually think about what gets you to that ideal situation. If you were to, let's say, earn 100K from your business as like profit, then what is stopping you from getting to that 100K? If 100K allows you to achieve financial freedom in your sense of financial freedom, then what is stopping you? Is it the fact that you're not putting enough time into your business? Is it the fact that you haven't upgraded your set of knowledge? Is it because you haven't hired the right mentors or coaches for your business? Like, what is it that is really stopping you? And then after you figured out what is it that's stopping you, you can then plan for it. You can then plan, hey, so because the fact that I'm not achieving 100K right now is because I haven't hired their mentors and coaches, I've never hired mentors and coaches as a matter of fact, then you can actually make those changes and you can actually get closer to your goal after you get rid of these obstacles. And so 
I know right now you might be thinking, oh, duh, like, of course. But the thing is, this really helps people, like, I want to say be more strategic and not just positive thinking. One thing that I really have an issue with is just that how the world seems to think that, oh, once you really imagine it hard enough, once you imagine you're living your best life, you can magically get there. But but the point is, like, the point of law of attraction isn't, like, once you imagine it hard enough, you're going to get there. It's also, like, once you put your mind to it and once you know, like, exactly what you want and you keep thinking about it, of course you still have to put in the work. It's not like you can just, you know, sit on your couch and opportunity is just going to land in your lap. Like do this exercise with me. Um, right now, if you're standing or sitting, just like if it's safe, of course, if you're driving, don't do this. Just close your eyes, right? Do this together. Close your eyes and imagine really, really hard that $100,000 is going to come from the sky and land in your lap. And you have to be really, really focused and you have to be really serious about this. No laughing. Okay. And then I'm going to count from three. Three, two, one. Open your eyes. Do you have $100,000 in your lap right now? And my guess is probably not. So that's the thing with positive thinking. You, of course, you can imagine like the best case scenario getting like, you know, $100,000 in your lap right now. But without actually working for it, if you just, you know, sit on your couch, sit on your chair and do nothing, it's not going to, it's not going to come to you. That's why it's really a combination of mindset and strategy that really gets you to your goal, which is what WHOOP is all about. And so now that we've talked about WHOOP, let me know what is your opinion on positive thinking, whether or not it works and whether or not you agree with WHOOP. And of course, any insight that you have just throughout the week, let me know in the comments and I will see you in my next dividend investing and wealth building video.